all these realizations are part of the realizations that come from experiencing the experience of Ramadan. Okay, not just that we are abstaining from food and drink and doing everything else which, which doesn't give us traction. So we have to have spiritual traction. All right? And to have spiritual traction, you must not have distraction. Right? Too many distractions take you away from being able to focus your, your consciousness on the meaning of, of acquiring these rewards from fasting. And the ultimate reward, of course, or the beginning of the reward, depending upon where you are in your spiritual journey, is to experience your own Laylatul Qadr. The experience of Laylatul Qadr for different people will be different. And one way to look, to think of it, is to think of it as having a cup of tea or coffee. The coffee is contained in a coffee bean, or the tea is maybe in the tea leaves or in a tea packet, or maybe the sweetness of the, of the drink is in, a, is in the sugar, or maybe it's a cube of sugar. But when you put the cube of sugar into the water, ev the whole water tastes of the sugar. So with every sip, you can actually taste a little bit of the sweetness of the sugar. Laylatul Qadr is like the, the, the flavor of the month of Ramadan. So if you fast Ramadan daily, Iman al Wahtisaban, as we say, faithfully, in an attitude of faith and belief and conviction in Allah, desiring to fulfill what Allah expects from you, then with every day that you fast, it's like having a sip, like drinking a cup of tea or a sweet beverage. With every sip, you are tasting a taste of Laylatul Qadr. And that act of fasting every day in the month of Ramadan will have a transformative effect upon you. And that it will give inside your consciousness and awareness, an awareness and understanding at a, at a kind of intuitional level, at an intuitional level of the meaning of Laylatul Qadr, which is the essence of the month of Ramadan and the essence of what fasting is all about. And so when we fast, and this is something we must do with all of our acts of worship. We must not look at the actions that we do as ends in themselves. Everything that you do, whether it is your fasting or your uh, prayers or your performing of the Hajj, it is for a particular another end. Some Muslims just think of the prayer as an end in itself. No. It's like buying a car and just loving the car, okay? I mean, you, you buy a car to take you somewhere. But some people buy a car because of status. They want a car says, I have this car, all right? Some people, relationship, some people, some Muslims' relationship with Islam is like a person who buys a car, not for transportation, but because they want to call themselves an, a car owner, a Mercedes owner a Rolls-Royce owner, a Ferrari owner. No, you buy a car for a greater purpose. And therefore, you must pray not because of prayer or we want people to say, oh, what a lovely person he is, what a devout person he, this man prays, you know. No, you, you pray because you want to reach God. You fast because of certain objectives that bring you to a closer relationship with the Creator. So when you fast, you must fast for a purpose. This is the meaning of niyyah. The first hadith in the collection of Sahih al-Bukhari is إِنَّ الْأَعْمَلَ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Indeed, all actions or actions are judged by their intentions. 
So the intention with which you do anything gives that thing the meaning. And even we know this. You know, if you, if you have an argument with your wife, you know, and she's angry with you, and you know, you want to manipulate her, and you give her flowers, she'll throw the flowers in your face. Or if you say, I love you, sweetheart, don't tell me you love me, you know, because she, she knows your niya. Your niya is not one of love. Your, your niya is one of manipulation or and not a good niya. So the Creator even understands our niya even more. Okay? So the niya is very important in everything that you do. But niya is not just that you say it. Of course, saying it is formally important. But what is more important is that the real content, the substance of your intention is there. So if the substance of your intention in fasting is to reach God, is to experience that Al-Qadr. Not so you can say, oh, I've experienced that Al-Qadr. No, but so that you can say, ah, Alhamdulillah, God, I have, I know you, I believe in you, I bear witness to you. I, 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 I'm now worshipping you in a state in which I see you. This is the demand of the month of Ramadan because this is the demand of the Shahada itself. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. What does bearing witness mean? Aku bersaksi bahwa tidak ada Tuhan kecuali Allah. What does bersaksi mean? It means that you, that you see it, you experience the reality of God. It's not some just, you know, idea that your parents taught you about and that you are not sure about it. Many of us, I remember when I was a young boy, I actually asked my father once, I said, doesn't ashhadu means that I see? He's a witness, he said, yes. Doesn't ashhadu an la ilaha illallah means that I see that there's no God but God? He said, yes. I said, Dad, I haven't seen God yet. And I used to feel very uncomfortable. I was taught to pray and you know, in my julus, I ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. And I, my voice would say, Faisal, you're a hypocrite. You're saying something, but you don't mean it. Because you don't, you don't, you're saying it, but you, it has no meaning. So I, I had to have this meaning. Otherwise, I'm just going through the motions. Now, our faith demands that you actually witness and bear witness to God, that you reach the maqam of ihsan, which according to the hadith of the Prophet is that you worship God in a state of seeing Him. And if you don't, then with the conviction that He sees you. Now all of this is a demand of our religion. Now how do you, how do you reach that? How do you get that? How do you start going on this journey? Fasting the month of Ramadan and fasting in general is a very important tool and an essential, an essential tool on this journey. And it's these blessings that we want to attain. And that is why Al-Qadr is better than a thousand months.